What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. So, Marvel's been needing to win. We all know that. And since Phase 5 started, we know that Marvel has been desperately seeking a win because they're starting to lose their viewerships, okay? People aren't showing up to these films like they used to. You saw the numbers with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Huge box office bomb. That thing is going to lose a ton of money, all right? And then you get to Guardians of the Galaxy, and folks are like, oh, yeah, that's a W. Yeah, that's a win for Marvel. You know, it made its money back. Listen, if you spend $250 million on a film just to barely get over the break-even point, you're not doing something right. All right, and there's something wrong with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Everybody knows it. Kevin Feige definitely knows it. And they're probably hoping, okay, this is our first television series. You know, we're going to get this thing started off with a bang with the TV show. Everybody hopefully will flock to their, you know, TV sets, tune in to Disney Plus, and then watch Secret Invasion. Because it's a very interesting storyline if you go back to the comics. Very interesting storyline, something that they definitely could work with, play around with, you know, could set some things up, you know, you could twist it and turn it around to kind of fit it within the MCU, and yeah, nobody cares, absolutely nobody cares about this thing, even right here, I was noticing this on the Rotten Tomatoes, that if you look at the number of um, ratings right here, only 500 people have even bothered to rate this thing. Now, that's not usual for a Marvel Cinematic Universe television show, movie, whatever. It's usually a lot of people watching this, coming to check it out, and nobody's checking for this. 500 ratings. Yeah, 75% audience score, but what's a 75% audience score if you only got 500 ratings after a full week and nobody's watching this? Secret Invasion suffers low viewership versus other MCU Disney Plus shows. Yeah, this thing is not getting viewed by anybody. Nobody cares. And you'll remember on my Secret uh, Invasion first episode review, I'll link that above if you didn't see it, but I said there was no buzz about this thing. Nobody was talking about it. You didn't see it trending on Twitter. You don't see a lot of articles being written about it. The only thing that you see is, you know, just like a spattering, you know, little mentions here and there about something related to Samuel L. Jackson or whatever. But you don't get a whole lot of articles, people talking about the show, saying, oh, man, this is interesting. What's going on with Secret Invasion? I wonder what's going to happen next. Nobody's really talking about it. You don't see the buzz that you normally would see on a big budget MCU show or movie or anything. This thing should be getting like House of the Dragon type buzz. You know what I'm saying? And it's not getting that. It's not even really getting the rings of power buzz. It's getting nothing at all. And that's very concerning because to me, that tells me that the audience is departing. Look, we love you guys from the first three phases, all right? We gave you back-to-back -back $2 billion hits with Infinity War and Endgame and No Way Home for that matter. You know, hey, we're done. We're finished with this. We're not coming back. And all of the box office numbers and this particular show right here, Prove it. Check this out. So it says, Secret Invasion's early viewership numbers are poor, ranking near the bottom of all MCU Disney Plus premieres. In the leading role, Samuel L. Jackson is back as Nick Fury, but this time he may be out of his league. Yeah, that's one of the problems right here, is that this character is just seeming like some washed up old man. I said that in my review. I think that is a huge issue. You can't, you know, tinker around with characters. And, you know, you show that in the first episode, you know, you're going to turn off a lot of people that were coming to see a competent Nick Fury going up against a competent group of villains or whatever, scrolls, whatever you want to do. You got to show some competency. And Nick Fury was just completely incompetent, looked like a boob out here. So, yeah, I don't think that this is the way they should have started this. A scroll rebellion has grown in the shadows for years and is now ready to strike fear and pain on Earth in order to create its own new world. Yeah, so that's basically what the television show is about. And it goes on to say right here, Secret Invasion suffers second lowest MCU premiere audience. Samba TV, our buddies at Samba, revealed that 994,000 U.S. households streamed Secret Invasion's premiere in the first five days of release. This makes Samuel L. Jackson's latest premiere the second lowest MCU Disney Plus show premiere in terms of viewership. Yeah, you'll never guess which one was number one. Obviously, that was, uh, yeah, Miss Marvel right there. And they give the numbers right here. You can check it out. Uh, Loki, Loki was the best, 2.5 million. So this is what Marvel wants to see. First five days of viewership, 2.5 million households, somewhere like that, all right? Samba has their own little TV setup, so it's, you know, how many Samba TV households were watching it. That's basically kind of like the Nielsen ratings. Uh, but nevertheless, 2.5 million. Tons of people went and saw uh, Loki. Then you got Moon Knight, 
Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier both coming in at 1.8 million, a uh, WandaVision at 1.6, and then Hawkeye and She-Hulk at 1.5. So these joints were all over a million viewers. 1.5 million was the lowest uh, for these two uh, series, uh, She-Hulk and Hawkeye, which I can consider both of them to be complete trash. Uh, but nevertheless, Secret Invasion couldn't even get to that. The Secret Invasion have an audience problem? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Nobody's watching it. What are you talking about? Right? Uh, the six-part event series is off to an upsetting start, especially considering it is only outperforming Miss Marvel so far, which was a brand new character within the MCU. The controversy surrounding Marvel's decision to use AI-generated images for the opening credits could play a factor. I, I honestly... I know that fans were outraged, as it says, uh, by that decision after watching the cold episode opening. Uh, but listen, I, I don't think the AI generation is the issue. I think people have checked out of Marvel. This is just further proof of that. That's it. They're just checked out of Marvel. Nobody's feeling this. Even though it's getting decent ratings on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics and the fans, nobody's really checking for this thing. Nobody's watching. Nobody cares. There's zero buzz. And that's the death knell of any television show. If you drop a, a television show and you're dropping it week to week to week and nobody's talking about it, that is just like, yikes. You might as well have just dropped it all at once. Just spit all six episodes out on Disney Plus at the same time. Remember, that's what they're going to do with Echo. They're just dropping them all at once, dusting their hands off. We'll deal with it for two weeks. There's going to be some negativity and then we'll move on. You're going to get six weeks of nothing burger coming out of this thing. And that might be a good thing. If, if this series keeps going the way it's going, you know, if it keeps going down this negative path, in my opinion, with the character of Nick Fury, if they don't turn this thing around in episode two real quick, I mean, it just might end up just, you know what? Nobody cares. Let's just kind of forget this thing. And when's the next Marvel thing coming out? Basically, that's where it's going to end up becoming. But yeah, let's check out some of what the audience is saying. You know, 75%, that's not a bad rating, uh, but let's see what we got. Yeah, this guy, three and a half stars. Great show, very fun and exciting. All right. Uh, this one says, just your garden variety spy thriller type of show with an occasional mention of the blip or the scrolls. Had a few exciting sequences, so I'll probably keep watching when I have nothing better to do. Yeah, doesn't sound too enthusiastic, does he? I can't give this a good review. The CGI, oh my God, it looks like a fifth grader did the CGI for him. The story is a mess. It doesn't have consistent flow. The character arcs are poorly written. Even starting this episode with any reference to Russia was in poor taste. Disney, you could have changed the settings to a more friendly country. Only chances of saving this show is maybe if Carol Danvers' sh character shows up. I don't know if that's going to save anything. <laughs> that might make this thing absolutely fall off the side of a cliff. Uh, her character might be the only thing that can save the show. Samuel Jackson is a good actor, but the other actors in this show really lack acting talent. This guy gave it five stars. So far, so good. This is how a Marvel show is supposed to look and feel. You actually, you want to actually believe what you're seeing is possible, made real by special effects and great writing. Both things that have been non-existent in She-Hulk, Miss Marvel, and whatever that horrible Thor movie was. I hope Marvel has gotten their act together because so far, this looks like a step in the right direction. All right, somebody liked it. How on earth did they make Nick Fury boring and irrelevant? Watch this and find out. Wow. It's probably the best Marvel Disney Plus show. All right. Uh, good story. Show has potential. Very interested in how this project shapes up. Yeah, you got a lot of positive reviews. I thought it was absolutely dreadful. Disney has failed again. Graphics are just okay. Not impressive at all. The storyline is old and used over and over for decades. Shape-shifting aliens trying to take over the planet. Been there, seen that. Yeah. I mean, you got to do different stuff with it. I think the original Secret Invasion storyline is a little bit more interesting than what they're giving us. This guy, another amazing Phase 5 installment. I, I, outside of Guardians, I don't know what this guy is talking about. Yeah. Uh, boring and pointless. Yeah. I mean, it is kind of boring. It's not necessarily pointless. There's there's stuff that they're trying to set up. You can tell that with the uh, with the story. Uh, but yeah, it, it kind of meanders a little bit. And like I said in my review, you know, when you have a character like Nick Fury, you know, you're interested in what he's doing. And when he's not behaving like Nick Fury, and it's just kind of like, well, what's going on here? And you're trying to read between the lines, and you see the obvious setups coming, and he doesn't see them. So it's just kind of like, man, what the hell are we watching? <laughs> This guy, Disney Marvel has done it again. They took one of the best storylines in Marvel Comics and turned it into a horribly scripted, boring, and awful butchery of what could have been a massive success for Marvel. Uh, Jackson acts like he's phoning in his performance. You can see the issues of not having a significant budget. Almost half the scenes in the first episode take place in dimly lit rooms where two act actors are delivering exposition to push the plot. Very true. Uh, the CGI, when they use it, is really bad. Even the first episodes, there are so many questions raised that aren't about what's going to happen it, with the plot of the show, but why the creators have made the decisions they have made. 100% right here, man. Like, this is the thing. 
it's the creative decisions that are being made that you're like, wait, why is Nick Fury behaving like this? And somebody actually mentioned this in the um, in the um, comments on the review is that you you can't write characters more intelligent than yourself or something to that effect. I can't forget I, can't, I forget the exact wording, but it's so true. Like it's clear that they can't make the characters that they want to make the scrolls. They can't write more intelligent things for the scrolls to do to take down Nick Fury, to give him an actual challenge to the character that he's given us in the first four phases of Marvel, they can't write a character that can challenge Nick Fury, so they have to make Nick Fury an idiot. That's basically the only thing they can do. They have to have Nick Fury getting set up by a dude that's clearly some sort of a double agent, and oh shit, he's a scroll. I had no idea. Or they have him at the very end just walking into an obvious trap where he should have had like 30 secret agents just standing all over the place waiting for these dudes because he, he knows that they're scrolls rolls of foot everywhere in this thing and it was like why did they do this why are they doing this as a creative choice it's weird and it and to me it just shows that they don't know how to write something more compelling for nick fury to have to unravel and that's just a lack of their talent that has nothing to do with the character so they just dumb down nick fury uh, this person nails it it's the creative decisions that's the biggest issue with this show uh, this guy, what an awful start to a series. Instead of a cracking spy thriller, we get this mess filled with plot holes and a washed up Nick Fury. A loved character played by a legendary actor is insulted again and again in the first episode and is portrayed as weak, unsure of himself, and just incompetent. Bingo. Uh, the scroll plans makes little sense overall, and instead of building a mystery... Uh, of a building mystery the plot is spelled out in the first 10 minutes we are all aware of the trope of marvel characters who can't call other superheroes in their standalone movies or shows that said wouldn't a master spy with dozens of years of experience have dozens of people yeah that he could call in favors from or just blackmail them into help and this looks like another direct to disney plus marvel dud didn't i literally just say this dude should add like a whole host of people standing out there at the end there's no way in the world if you look at the end of that first episode that nick fury should have just been out there with just him agent uh hill and and talos it's like man we need to get everybody over here all right we need to get the entire there's a big plot about to unfold we need to get everybody here no, I'm just going to walk around there. We got this, okay? We just got to follow these two backpacks. This, oh, oh, my God. If there's one thing that I cannot stand, man, it's just like trash writing, just incompetent. That's it, dude, just incompetent. I loved it. I loved how this all plays out. I love Marvel, and I love that they started making these shows. They give us so much more than a two-hour movie ever could. I love the idea that anyone could be a scroll now. This should be exciting. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be exciting if they get the writing right. You know, if they don't, if it's just going to be more of the same of what we saw in episode two, it's going to be terrible. Terrible. The show insults and destroys the character of Nick Fury, and it seems as though none of the main characters take the threat of the show seriously. The plot already doesn't make sense. This guy, that's the type we want. Good. Like, I mean, you know, what are you supposed to do with this? These are the people that I think are bots. Like, they don't even bother to put anything more than a couple of words. Uh, so far, it seems to be standard spy fare and a far cry from the comic book run, but it's just the first episode, so hopefully it will get better. Yeah, I think that's what you got to hope for at this point with Secret Invasion. You know, the viewership is not there, and the people that are even saying they like it, they don't really say why they like it. You know, what is making you come back to watch this thing? You know, normally when you get a Marvel Cinematic Universe show or movie that people love, they're gushing about it. They're praising it. They got so much to say. These guys with their 75%, you you know, uh, score, good. Like, I mean, what else is it, okay? Um, this person, a little unfair to review the series based on the first episode, but it certainly looks interesting and we'll be watching it. I'm not a big fan of shapeshifters, you know, so it gives a little bit more, but they say, well, I, I, it's interesting, you know, and that's the that's the score that they give. We'll see how this thing unfolds. We'll see if the score goes up or down. We'll see if the viewership gets any better, but in my opinion, I think that they have gotten off to, once again, a bad start for an MCU property this thing should have been a slam dunk. The comic book is awesome. They should have just did that. But they're definitely going in a different direction. We'll see how it goes. But you guys let me know what you think. Jump down in the comments. Give me your thoughts and opinions on that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.